Do you ever hear those words? What's for dinner? What's for dinner? What's for dinner? From your family, your partner, your kids, and you are completely sick of it? I have the solution for you. In today's video, we are doing a sheep pan meal marathon video. This is gonna go on all day. <laughs> Okay, not all day, but you get the point. This is a really, really long video. I am here to give you endless dinner inspo utilizing our favorite sheet pan meals. As many of the recipes as I can find, I will link down in the description box for you. So if you love sheet pan meals, hook me up with a thumbs up. Share this video with a friend of yours that might also enjoy a little dinner inspo. Let's get going. Oh, hello, empty sheet pan. It looks like he is about ready for some deliciousness. Now, this is going to be, I keep saying this, this is gonna be so dang easy. This is like, why do we make dinner complicated? That's what I wanna know, because it doesn't have to be. Check it out, you're gonna die. Potatoes. My good friend, the Brussels. Look at this. Doesn't this look amazing already? We're gonna go with some Earl. Does that remind you of that song? Is that the Dixie Chicks? Wait, did they change their name? The Chicks? Is that what they're called? That song Earl, do you know what I'm talking about? If you know what I'm talking about, Give this video a thumbs up. Onto this, you are going to add uh, your favorite seasoning blend. I am using the 21 Salute, wait, 21 Seasoning Salute from Trader Joe's. I'm not kidding, you could literally use salt and pepper and that's all. I believe this one has salt in it. Onion, spices, no. Okay, this one does not have salt in it. So I'm gonna do this one and salt. So I'm gonna go pretty heavy on this because we want our food to taste good. You know what I'm saying? Where's my salt? I'm telling you, living with other people, they take all my stuff and I can't find it ever. Okay, generous heaping of salt because these are potatoes. Potatoes can handle a good bit of salt. Do not be afraid of the pep, my friends. A grazie. Give this, you know, a nice massage. Ask it how it's, how it's doing. Maybe we could go on a date later. Ask it out for drinks. We just wanna get all that oil and seasoning like covered, especially especially in these Brussels. You want it to get in all of those little grooves. Here's the annoying part, is to make these uber crispy, you wanna put all the cut sides down. That's Brussels sprout and potato. Just go through it real quick, make sure all those potato sides are down, the Brussels sprouts are down, and that'll give you a super delicious crispy cut side. Me personally, I'm a huge fan of crispy food. You give me crispy food and I am going to be happy. I'm so happy. Did I get all of it? Okay, next, the crowning jewel. My favorite cut of meat, sausage. This is an andouille sausage and I'm just sprinkling it on top. It's gonna be amazing. All that fat's gonna render out and the potatoes are gonna cook in it and the Brussels sprouts are gonna cook in it and it's gonna be so good. That's just one pound of sausage. Now we're gonna go in a 425 degree oven for, I don't know, like 20 minutes and then we will check it. You get it? We're gonna check it, check it. Are you looking at this? I can't even. If you have a bigger family, you might need to do um, two pans of this. As it is, I would imagine it would feed approximately four people. Now, you can obviously bump up the volume of this meal by adding a side salad, adding some bread or something on the side, or maybe just a whole nother pan of taters. But definitely a family of four right here. Now, this one I'm actually sharing with my mom because my mom says it's really like just not fun to cook for one. You know what I mean? So I have like half the plate with all of this stuff. And then I do have a bagged salad. I'm gonna take over to her so she can have a little bit more veggies, but I wish you could smell this. The smell of the sausage with the salty potatoes. It's just heavenly. Hey friends, sorry to interrupt the cooking video, but I wanted to tell you about today's sponsor, Seed, and why it matters to me. So a few months ago, I had some health issues. I don't want to get into that, but I did start researching more about gut health and was really interested in including a probiotic into my diet. And I wanted one that was backed by science. So what I found is Seed is a actually daily symbiotic, which is probiotics and prebiotics kind of together. After listening to a podcast with the guest 
Chris Kresser. Uh, he talked a ton about gut microbiome and how it affects so much of your body. I would recommend anyone to go and research the gut microbiome, how it affects your health, and how a probiotic and prebiotic like this symbiotic can promote health as well in your life. If you want to try this out for yourselves, I do have a link down below. It's going to get you a sweet deal. You should have to use the code Christine at checkout to get 20% off of your first subscription of Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. Uh, one more time, that's just the code Christine. It's going to be the first link down the doobly doo below to go check that out for yourselves. Thank you so much to Seed for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to more sheet pan meals. We are making a sheet pan dish I'm very excited about because it's easy and it's Cajun. <laughs> so I've started with six ears of corn. They've been shucked obviously and cut into quarters. And this is big enough to feed six people definitely. So you're gonna need two sheet pans for this. I have my oven preheating at 425 degrees. If you have convection, go ahead and do that. Now I have one pound of the mini sweet peppers and you could cut these in half and take the seeds out. But I find that there's so few seeds anyway that, I mean, this is all about easy speed look how beautiful these are already i absolutely love looking at vegetables sometimes because of the gorgeous colors look how amazing this looks tell me you're not already excited about this dinner right here next up i have some fresh thyme it <laughs> what fresh thyme if you get your hands on some of this i usually like to keep it in my freezer it does turn a little brown that way but it's okay i'm just going to kind of pull some of the seeds like this and then just sprinkle the whole thing over that this is definitely not fancy we'll call that what persnickety this is just like get it on the pan right next up a little sprinkly dinkle of olive oil is that a weird word sprinkly dinkle <laughs> well you know a healthy drizzle of olive oil here mostly because this, uh, this bottle does not have a small spout, so it just kind of globs out. And your favorite Cajun seasoning. Now this is not my favorite one, my favorite is Uncle Tony's, but I did pick this one up on clearance a little bit ago because I love Cajun seasoning. So let's just use this one up. And we're gonna give it a generous teaspoon sprinkle on each pan, maybe a teaspoon and a half, you know, whatever. And get in there and mix it all together. Now we're gonna add our chicken. I have six pieces of boneless, skinless chicken breast, so I'm gonna kind of like spread out my veggies so they can kind of come in the middle here. Now I'm doing three pieces for each sheet pan here. The chicken will also have a little drizzle of olive oil and our Cajun seasoning. Now, depending on the brand that you use, you might have to add salt and pepper. Mine has salt in it already, so I will not add any salt here. Make sure you give it a little flip a get both sides. If you're not familiar with Cajun food, they spice their foods heavily. Time to throw it into our oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until everything's about done. You are so Beautiful. Oh, do you hear that sizzle? I love that. It's like they're excited to go to dinner. Are you ready for what we are going to do to these veggies? It's gonna be epic. Gonna be legendary. Just finished watching How I Met Your Mother, so the leg legendary things on my mind. So I'm taking the chicken out. You know, we have all this delicious sauce and everything but we're gonna add another one. I'm gonna top the veggies with your favorite hot sauce. Now, since this is Cajun, Tabasco would have been the way to go, but I don't have any right now, I have Cholula. So that is what I will use. So just a little sprinkly sprinkle like this, and then toss, toss all your veggies in that juice, the hot sauce, and now we can start plating. You could even dump all of this on a platter and let everyone just kind of pick their own. Oh, I might do that now that I'm thinking about it. That sounds like a good plan. So I'm just gonna do this big mixing bowl and here comes all of my delicious veggies with the hot sauce. And I mean, you guys like onions? Throw some onions in there. You like cooked celery? Throw some celery in there. You can put in whatever veggies you want and I'll sprinkle a little more Cholula on top of that. I mean, you could do Sriracha, you could do whatever. And if you've got a lot of kids that don't wanna dig into that kind of stuff, just serve it at the table and let people do their own. I hope you like shrimp because this is a delicious, about four ingredient shrimp sheet pan dinner. So we're gonna start with 
Two cups of cherry tomatoes right there. Look how beautiful those are. I did give them a quick rinse. One to two pounds of peeled and deveined thawed shrimp. I'm gonna do a full two pounds here because I do have six people in my family that I'm trying to feed. If you have fewer than that, one pound is probably gonna be just fine. Next up is some olive oil. So we'll give everything that's on here a little bit of a drizzle. You could also use butter. I, I personally love butter. I think it's delicious. Some salt to your heart's content. And here's my tip when it comes to salting your food, especially when you're roasting like this, is put as much salt as you think you need and then add a little bit more. Next up is some fresh pepper. Fresh pepper. Oh, sure. A grazie. And if you're into that garlic life, let's add some garlic. I know this is upside down because I'm trying to get the last little bit out of this. Fresh garlic would of course be better, but this one is just so convenient. So don't be shy. I'm trying to use up the rest of this. Come on. I wanna get rid of this condiment out of my refrigerator. Let go. Is that enough? Is that enough? Okay. Is it easier just to do this? Yes. I feel dumb for not taking the lid off earlier. <laughs> that is now empty, a ah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Before we throw this in the oven, I'm gonna give it a little, a little zhuzh, a little stir. We want all of these flavors to be totally combined. 400 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your oven. Once your pan comes out of the oven, mine took about closer to 15 minutes. I'm gonna take one lemon and your lemon juicer and squeeze this all over the top. And you can serve this just like this with a salad or some bread on the side, or you can serve it on top of pasta, which is what I am doing. So I had half a box of penne that I am cooking over here in a different pot that is almost ready. So we're gonna stir all of this together in just a moment. I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper. What do you think on the salt, Haley? I think the salt's good. Salt it's level. Okay, we got, we got the pepper. Yeah, it's just a little bit. This is essentially a chicken and veggies dish. You could use whatever cut of chicken. I'm using thighs because I love thighs. I just think the dark meat flavor is so delicious. And you can use whatever veggies you want. Turn it aside, keep the skin, don't keep the skin. It feels like, I'm not keeping the skin. <laughs> just cause it pulled off so easy. So there's six thighs in here, so this, in theory, could feed a family of six, although my kids really like to eat two thighs per person because this is a pretty small serving. Depending on the side dishes that you serve, um, if you were to bump this up with a serving of rice or bread or salad or something like that, I think you could probably get away with feeding six people. Otherwise, I would say this one would feed four, I think. And I have my oven preheating at 425 right now. Those skins just like pulled right off. These do have the bones in them. So you don't need to worry about overcooking this chicken. It's not going to get dried out or anything, which is another reason I love dark meat is because it's really hard to mess it up. Maybe I'll just move all my chicken to one side and all my veggies will come over here. So I have my three bell peppers that I just chopped up. That is a lot. It'll be fine. Also, I'm gonna use this. Woo! Just threw it on the floor. Oops. Um, this broccoli and cauliflower mix right here. Some of these are really big. Look how huge that is. I'll just cut that in half. Now, at this point, you're basically just adding your favorite seasoning. And I'm using a pre-mixed seasoning packet today. I found this one at Ross and it's been sitting in my pantry and I need to use it, so here we are. But you can just use salt and pepper. If you use enough salt, it'll taste perfectly good. You can use a Mrs. Dash kind of thing. You could use Uncle Tony's. You could do just whatever. So I'm gonna give this a good drizzle of oil so my flavoring will stick. There is salt in this. I'm just double checking. There's quite a bit of salt in this, so I don't need to add extra salt. 425 for 20 to 30 minutes, depending on your oven. Okay, update on the sheet pan dinner. I ended up separating these because my chicken thighs are taking a very long time to cook and my veggies are about done. So the veggies are coming out. I still want them to be like a little, like cooked, but slightly crunchy. You know, I don't want them to be mush. You know what I mean? So here are my roasted veggies. Those are coming out. They look delicious. And I'm gonna leave my thighs in I don't know, another 10 minutes, they are really taking a long time. What I love about sheet pan dinners is that they're so dang 
easy. Like this is one of the easiest things that you can put together. Essentially, we're putting together a protein, like pick your favorite protein, your favorite veggies, and some seasonings on top, and bada boom, bada bang, you've got dinner in like 20 minutes. The only thing that would make it better is if I could do all of that in my air fryer, if they made an air fryer that could hold as much as a sheet pan. I haven't found one yet. If you found an air fryer that can hold that much, I would rather do it in that. This is sheet pan sweet and sour chicken from Budget Bites. So you know it's going to be a budget dinner. I'm using two sheet pans here because you don't want anything like on top of each other, if that makes sense. I'm gonna try and divvy up all my stuff equally. So I have this huge bowl of red and green bell peppers, onion, and a little bit of the white part of a green onion. Half there, half there. It's kind of do this business. And then we're gonna add the chicken. I do have three chicken breasts that I cut into like cubes. I'm just eyeballing it. I feel like the quantity I'm doing would not fit on one cookie sheet. And because I am using two, I set my oven to convection, 400 degrees on convection. So the air should blow evenly across the whole thing. Okay, there is all the chicken. And then we're gonna add uh, one can of pineapple. And I was supposed to use pineapple chunks, but I have this one in my pantry that I'm just gonna try and drain it the best I can and use this one. Okay, I did get most of that out, so I'm gonna try and just sprinkle that. I know it's supposed to be chunks. You know, it's the same idea, it's pineapple. You guys like canned pineapple or no? I don't mind it. I grew up eating canned pineapple, but the time I had fresh pineapple for the first time, I was 19 years old, and I was like, what is this magic? It was so delicious. Now we're gonna season everything. Of course, we're gonna add our olive oil. Whoops, <laughs> I went a little heavy there. A little drizzle of that, or a glob of that, whatever. <laughs> Some garlic powder, just however much you like. If you love garlic powder, you can go a little bit heavy. Dave likes it, we'll go a little bit heavy. Some ground ginger, that might be a little too much, but it's okay. Ground ginger is good too. <laughs> Salt and pepper to taste, which means lots of fresh pepper. The people, the people, they want the pepper. All right, and salt for the win. These are going to bake for about 40 minutes in the oven, and while that's going, we'll mix up a sauce. We are going to put into this mixing bowl about a quarter cup of ketchup, which is about that, a third of a cup of rice vinegar, a tablespoon and a half of soy sauce, or I'm gonna use these coconut aminos because I have them in my cabinet. Basically the same thing. A tablespoon and a half of cornstarch, and the rest of your pineapple juice that you reserved. Mix it up right nice. And you can either uh, cook this in the microwave or on the saucepan, on the stove, whatever you wanna do. I'm feeling like the microwave is the way to go because I just don't want to turn on the stove. <laughs> and I already have everything in this mixing bowl. So I'm gonna stick it in the microwave until it like gets a little bit thick. So we'll start out with a minute and a half, stir it and see what it looks like. What? Steam up the kit. We're about ready to steam up the camera. Let's check that chicken. I just wanna make sure the chicken is cooked all the way, all the way through. It feels pretty solid, so I'd say we are there. Let's pull these out. That is all she wrote, and if you're wondering why it's in this foil pan, it's because I'm actually taking this over to a neighbor for their family for dinner tonight. If you're making it for yourself, go ahead and cook up some rice, serve it on top of some rice. Oh, don't forget, sprinkle it with the green onions. I'm just taking this over with some Instant Pot rice to my neighbor. If you wanna make this also, but you don't need any extra dinners, you can also make it and take it over to a friend. It's great to stick into one of these foil containers from Sam's Club, they're a really great price there. Cook up some rice. You could even put the rice on bottom, then this on top, take it over. They would love to have a meal if you are so inclined, or you can just serve it to your own family. Tonight's sheep pan dinner is gonna be from one of my favorite websites, damndelicious.net, I believe it is. The recipe will be linked down below. It is sheep pan, cauliflower, nachos, what? I have one full head of cauliflower that I chopped into kind of florets a little bit. I tried to make them small because it is supposed to be nachos, right? So I wanted them to be more bite-sized than your big, big florets. And I am tweaking the recipe 
a little bit because I like to do that. You do need some diced red onion and I had all this red onion left over so I'm just gonna mix in the rest of the red onion in here. I like cooked onion a lot. I just don't love it raw. It's too tangy to me. But we're gonna put that in there just to give it a little, little bit of a zing. Onto the cauliflower, we will do some earl. We will roast the cauliflower first for a little while before we add the rest of the ingredientes. Some garlic, I'm using this tubey guy because oh my gosh, it's so easy. It's just so easy. There's one clove, two cloves, three cloves. Don't worry, I'll mix this up in a minute. A half a teaspoon of cumin. Honestly, I'm just gonna eyeball most of this. That's like, I don't know, cumin's good. There we go. A little bit of chili powder. You don't want it to taste like chili, so I'm gonna go pretty light. About the same amount of paprika. And this is just your cheap great value paprika. Some salt and pepper, of course. So I just have some kosher salt here. I'm gonna season that pretty good because cauliflower can be kind of bland. Don't forget the fresh pepper. I just kind of want to get those seasonings, the oil and the garlic, just kind of all over everything. So just give it a massage. In the oven, 425 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, this is what we have. And we're gonna add uh, three more ingredients. So first of all, I'm gonna throw in some of this tubey cilantro. If you wanna use fresh cilantro, save it until serving time. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a drizzle. Four more ingredients, I think. That's number one. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of tortilla chips, six ounces or so. Also, this brand of tortilla chips is legit my favorite brand in the entire world. If you can find them, buy them, love them, you'll never go back. Get those to come together a touch. And also, this smells amazing. In case you didn't know, can you guys smell that? Next up is a can or a pouch of black beans. And they said you're supposed to like rinse it and all that jazz, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of drizzle it on there. This is a 10 ounce pouch. Um, and I think the recipe calls for a 15 ounce can. So this is probably a little on the shy side for the black beans, but that's all right. The cheese, you can use whatever cheese you want. I have a Colby Jack shredded. It's just what I have in my fridge. So that's what I'm using. Cheddar, pepper jack, ooh, pepper jack would be awesome. Awesome sauce. You guys remember that commercial? I probably went a little too heavy on the cheese. I think they said one cup and I think I put two cups, but it's fine. Back in the oven for another five to six minutes to melt all of that cheesy goodness. Oh, yes. Now it's time to add the toppings and you can do kind of whatever you want. This is what I have. I have some tomato that I grew in my own garden. I just picked like a whole bowl of beautiful red tomatoes from my garden. I feel like if you can grow a tomato, you have succeeded in life. That's what it is. I do have my like red diced onions right there for the peeps that like it. You can put some sliced jalapeno or jalapeno if you're the kid I used to babysit on top. I do have some growing in my garden. I was just too lazy to go get it, so I don't, <laughs> I don't have it. Some uh, guacamole. I think the holy guacamole, best store brand hands down, best one. So legit, it tastes so good. I think I'm gonna just put the guac on each individual serving, so let's scoop it up. I feel like a bowl is a good idea. How's that angle? How's that angle, huh? Is this the wrong spatula for this? I feel like this is a bad plan. These bowls are huge, by the way. Enormous, okay. Wait, is this meal vegetarian? Is this vegetarian? Look at me. Um, I just, oh, okay. Spin it so you can't see it. There we go. Yes, that looks so good. How satisfying is this right here? Do we eat it with a fork? Do we eat it with our hands? Whatever you want to do. That's the beauty of it. Oh, you take that chip right there. Mmm. Mmm. Go make it. If you want it to, just want the... After I have all my veggies and chicken on my sheet pan, you know, you can use whatever veggies you want. You can use spicy peppers. You don't have to use as much onion. It's whatever. You could do steak or pork or anything. I am going to drizzle with some extra virgin olive oil. Sprinkle my Thrive Market fajita seasoning mix. Okay, I'm having a really hard time opening that. And I am going to juice and squeeze a couple of limes on here and mix all this up. Time to pick your tortilla. I have these street tacos. I, Dave tells me to keep, stop buying them because they're too small to fit anything on. So I think we're gonna use these up first 
And if I get through these, I'll switch over to the corn tortillas. Make sure you heat these up on a skillet or over a fire uh, so they're a little bit more pliable and cooked, I guess. We're just trying to get these out of my bread cabinet today uh, because I already had them. So street taco tortillas it is. And come on, they're so dang cute, right? This sheet pan meal might be a little bit of a cheat, but I think it's still gonna work. You will start with a Pillsbury pizza crust or a great value pizza crust. It doesn't matter. We use whatever brand you like. I'm gonna be doing two of them because I have a lot of people to feed. I have a greased sheet pan right here and another one waiting in the wings. My oven is preheating to 400. So I'm just gonna spread this out and pre-bake this in the oven. Please don't pop my hand. Please don't pop my hand. Oh, good, good, okay. We're gonna preheat this in the oven for ah, six to seven minutes. And while that's going, I will cook up my topping. Oh, whoops. Um, we're essentially making Sloppy Joe pizzas and this should be fast and easy. And I do wanna spread this out quite a bit more. I might just put both on this one pan um, cause this one's only covering half. You know what, let's just do that. Let's put both on one pan and only one sheet pan. Fun story about this pizza crust is I did a Walmart grocery pickup for the ingredients for this video that I'm doing. Oh, I like the Pillsbury one better. It's like longer and fits nicer than this one. Okay, so that's interesting to note. My Walmart grocery pickup only gave me one, even though I had ordered two. So I had to go into the store to go get it. Somehow on the way home, the lid had gotten smashed. And so when I got home, it was open. Like the lid had popped open. It was unusable for this video. So I had to go back to the store again to get another one. The Pillsbury pizza crust here has really given me a run for my money. 400 to 425, depending on how hot your oven cooks or whatever, whatever pan color you're using. A darker pan will go with a lighter temperature. A lighter pan will go with a higher temperature for six to seven minutes. While my pizza crust is preheating, I have browned up one pound of ground beef and I'm going to add one jar of your favorite Sloppy Joe mix. This is kind of the only kind my Walmart has is the manwich. Mix all of that around, warm it through. This is my sauce and topping for my pizzas. This comes together so quick. It's ridiculous. When the pizza crust comes out of the oven, you can see that the Pillsbury side actually, I feel like bakes more evenly than the generic side. So that's also interesting. We're gonna top all of it with our Sloppy Joe ground beef mixture. Next up is a mixture of cheeses. So I have about a huge handful, we'll call that a cup, of shredded mozzarella cheese. Maybe a smaller handful of some shredded cheddar or Colby Jack or something like that. A little sprinkle of the shaky cheese. Man, all, mine's all lumpy, look at that. I don't know why it's so lumpy today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I thought it had anti-caking ingredients in there. That is not working very well. Anyway, we're gonna put a little sprinkle of that, which is great. I can use up this huge container because it's almost empty and get that out of my fridge. Sometimes I love stuff like this because it just uses up all the things you have in your fridge. And then you're like, oh, look at all this room. And then you can go shopping and get more stuff. Okay, and I dripped some cheese on the counter. So I'm gonna pick that up. <laughs> and throw that on here as well. Okay, back in your oven for another seven to eight minutes. Oh, oven glove, don't do me wrong. Oh, I'm getting food on it. I gotta wash it again. Oh, and we're done. Oh, I am not left-handed, this feels awkward. The Sloppy Joe pizza was such a hit with my kids. Andrew doesn't even like regular Sloppy Joes, but in pizza form, for some reason, it was different. Do kids make sense all the time? No, they do not. How can you go wrong with chicken and potatoes? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. And of course, we can add a little zucchini, a little tomato for a little bit extra health and fitness. So I kicked this off by making an oil and lemon juice herb mixture, had some salt, thyme, oregano, crushed red pepper flakes, because I really like that, olive oil, 
and lemon juice. I gave that a little bit of a stir and set that to the side. Don't worry, we're gonna cover the chicken, the veggies, everything with this later. If you don't wanna go through this step, you could of course buy maybe an Italian dressing or something like that, but I wanted to follow the recipe as it was written. So I rubbed it all over my spatchcock chicken. I think this is one and a half pounds of these like baby Yukon gold potatoes. They are so amazing. You just give them a quick rinse. You don't have to peel them. They're so easy. Tossed everything with salt, a little bit of pepper, and popped the whole thing into the oven at a high temperature. This was 475 degrees for 15 minutes. Then you lower the temperature, cook it a little bit more, and add the rest of the veggies. I'll tell you right now, this meal was delicious. Okay, after we've gone the 15 minutes at 475 and the 10 minutes at 400, it is time to add the zucchini, tomato, and garlic. I thought about adding extra zucchini, but oh, it might be fine. I'll save the other zucchini for something else. So I'm just kind of spreading it all over. It is soaking in the remaining oil and herb mixture, and it's gonna go back in at 400 for another 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna go 15. I find that my oven takes just a hair longer than some recipes. For my curried chicken, I'm making a sauce out of a bottle of red curry paste. I did use the entire bottle, it's a four ounce bottle. I have two tablespoons of brown sugar and four tablespoons of oil. This is gonna be my sauce. Wang, jangle that together. You guys wanna make bets on whether this red curry is gonna stain this white bowl? <laughs> Very possible, odds are good. I have one pound of trimmed and rinsed green beans, fresh green beans coming in. Look how amazing these look. These really do look great. One pound of carrots, you can use whole carrots. I have baby carrots here just because it's easy. About a half a teaspoon of salt going in and a little less than half of this curry paste sauce that I made. And I am gonna mix this with a gloved hand, I don't want red curry stained in my hands. I just feel like hands mix things so much better than any kind of spoon or tongs or anything like that. So we'll get these all coated. I feel like I could add more salt, honestly. A half a teaspoon feels a little light to me. But if Ree says it's gonna work, we're gonna try it. And it does say to have an oiled baking sheet, so we'll add some olive oil to that. Here come our vegetables. My last addition are 12 chicken drumsticks, bone in, skin on. The rest of the curry paste mixture I made up. I don't wanna waste a drop of that. And two teaspoons of salt. Give that a mix as well. Make sure everything is coated. And the chicken, we're just kind of nestle into all of the vegetables here. And we will roast this in a 425 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. For this sheet pan gnocchi with spicy sausage and peppers, I actually have two of these sheet pans covered in foil, but only one fit in this angle. So just assume I'm doubling this. We're kicking it off with four sliced bell peppers, your choice of color, so I'll do half on this pan and half on the other pan. Three small sliced red onions. Again, divvy this between the two pans. You're gonna like this recipe if you have a big family or big eaters because it makes so much. Next up is a whole head of peeled and smashed garlic and two pounds of spicy Italian sausage cut into approximately one inch sections. And again, divvy this between the two sheet pans. Sprinkle with some ground oregano and salt. Now remember the sausage is already spicy, so just assume you're salting the veggies at this point. Next up, drizzle with your favorite olive oil and mix to combine. This one is almost out. Good thing I buy multiples from Thrive Market and give that a good mix. So everything is coated with the oil, the salt, and the oregano. One last ingredient before it goes into the oven. A little bit over a pound package of gnocchi, half there, half in my other pan. And we'll make sure those are mixed in as well. And I have an onion overboard. <laughs> my onion, my, <laughs> my oven is at 400 degrees and we will bake both of these pans for 35 minutes or so. I will be switching about halfway. 
And if you have convection, like I do, I would turn your convection on. Okay, when you pull these out of the oven, we're gonna top it with some balsamic glaze and some shredded cheese. You can do Parmesan, Pecorino. I think I have Romano cheese. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a bowl. It's gonna be so amazing. To make this chicken and dressing sheet pan dinner, I have some ciabatta bread and cornbread, four cups of each that we are starting with, cut into cubes. To this, I will add onion, celery, and carrots, also chunked up. Um, just like, I love this, this is almost like a dump and go, but sheet pan meal style and not crock pot style. To this, I am going to add salt, pepper, sage, and thyme. I have some really coarse salt I am using today. I may come back with a smaller salt. I have ground sage and ground thyme both. I feel like sage is the epitome of a Thanksgiving flavor. It is one of my favorite herbs to use in chicken and I have like a sage bean soup. It's really good. We are going heavy, you guys. And ground time, there we go. And mix. Don't worry, we'll add butter in just a few minutes. But I wanna get this mixed together before we tuck our chicken in here. I have eight chicken thighs that I'll just kind of tuck in here. And I do wanna salt these as well. You can use bone in or bone off. Um, I'm using no bone, because it's what I have, but do try and stick with a dark meat. It's gonna cook a lot better. Okay, so we're gonna put some salt on this chicken and top the whole thing with butter. And I will take an entire stick of butter, slice it, and put all the little butter pats on top. Okay, the pan's gonna go into a 425 degree oven, cook it for 15 minutes, and then kind of stir the butter around, and then we'll cook it for another 20 minutes. On your sheet pan, we're gonna make a bed of vegetables of red and yellow bell peppers, two each, sliced into rounds. On top of that, one sliced into rounds onion. Kind of break those apart a little bit. Just making a bed of vegetables for our steaks to rest on. And two cups of whole cherry tomatoes, rinsed obviously. Here we go. Next up, we'll add our steak. I have a nice, thick, boneless ribeye two of them, one there. And these are so large that I'm sure you could divvy these into um, four servings. I am gonna season my steaks with Montreal steak seasoning. You could of course use any steak seasoning that you prefer. Very heavy coating on this. My oven is preheating into a high temperature broil. I really like this for the winter time because sometimes you can't get to your grill when it's covered in, you know, two feet of snow, much like my grill is covered in two feet of snow right now. <laughs> it's been snowing all week. So you can use your broiler to do, to simulate a grill experience just in your kitchen. So now that my steaks are coated in the seasoning, I'm gonna drizzle the top with my favorite olive oil, the whole thing actually, the veggies and the steak. Make sure everything's coated here and a little bit of butter on top of each one. Just like that. Let's put this in the oven for five minutes and then flip the steaks over. Five minutes on each side are over. So the steaks have come off, I'm gonna let them rest. In theory, you could serve it right now, but I want my veggies cooked a little more than this. So I'm putting this pan back in the oven on a lower rack for another five minutes. Yes, I know I need to clean my oven. <laughs> I got more important things to do, like cooking this delicious steak. Okay, I think like five more minutes for this one, we're gonna go lower this time. Is my head cut off? Dang. Every freaking time. How did the broccoli feel about being served for dinner? It was steamed. 
favorite and easiest sheet pan dinners, fajitas. If you've never done fajitas in a sheet pan, it is time that you start. And we're going big or going home. Well, we already are home, but we're going big today with two full sheet pans. I have a multitude of clearance peppers. That's where this uh, dinner stemmed from. I just found a bunch in those red meshy bags at Fred Meyer. It's my Kroger store. I have green peppers, yellow peppers, orange peppers, poblano peppers, some sliced onions, and then coming up next, a bunch of sliced chicken breast. So we'll put half of it in this one and half of it in this one. This will be your favorite way to make fajitas from now on. You could totally use steak, you can use chicken, you can use uh, shrimp, although since shrimp doesn't take very long to cook, I would maybe add it later since bell peppers take longer. You want less bell peppers, use less. You want more onions, use more. That's the beauty of this. These are completely full. Next up, I have three more ingredients. A heavy drizzle of the oil of your choice, a sprinkle of your favorite fajita seasoning. This is the one I happen to have. You can also use packets, you can mix up your own, it doesn't matter. I believe this one has salt in it already, so I'm not gonna worry about salt. I'm just gonna use it kind of like it was salt. And last but definitely not least, squeeze some halved limes, like just a ton of lime juice on those. Okay, I might do a lime and a half on each of these pans and then use the rest for drizzling at the table. And then you're gonna wanna get in there with your hands and make sure everything is thoroughly mixed. And for this, I do like to use gloves for two reasons. Number one, it saves me from washing my hands a million times. And number two, poblano peppers are not always hot. It's like one in 10 are spicy, but when you hit that one with a bare hand, it's gonna light you up. Even worse than jalapenos sometimes. Mix all of the oil and seasonings and lime juice so everything is coated. And then we will put it in an oven. I have my convection turned on because I have two pans here. 425 degrees for, I'm gonna start it at 20 minutes. I suspect I will need to go longer than that. Just cause I find that, I don't know, chicken and bell peppers don't cook very quickly in my oven. I don't know why. Sometimes other people say they can cook chicken in their oven in 20 minutes and I've never been able to do that. Maybe it's the chicken, maybe it's my oven, maybe it's me, who's to say? In the oven we go. Sheet pan fajitas is literally the only way to make fajitas. It's two pans, one pan, four pans, so easy. I am ridiculously excited about this sheet pan jambalaya. On my sheet pan, I have one red bell pepper and one sliced onion. I guess you could use a different color bell pepper, but red is tasty. And then about uh, 10 to 12 ounces of a sliced sausage. I have kielbasa here. Oh yes. I mean, these are the ingredients of a good beginning. A little drizzle of olive oil and one teaspoon of your favorite Cajun seasoning. Give that a little mix and pop it into the oven, 425 degrees for about 10 minutes. Don't worry, we're gonna add a ton to this. So if it looks like it's not that much food, hang on to your hats. There's gonna be a whole lot more. It's been 10 minutes and my kitchen smells Amazing. Coming up next, I have two bags of frozen rice cauliflower. You could use fresh also, whatever uh, whatever is the best price that day, but in total it's about 20 ounces. Of course, you could also use regular rice if you want, but we're, we are trying to load up the veggies today. On top of that, I have about a tablespoon of tomato paste. I like these tubey guys, because you can just keep them in your fridge. So convenient. And a whole nother teaspoon of the Cajun seasoning on our uh, rice. Get in here and mix all of this together. Mine's been thawing a little bit, so it's not quite frozen frozen. Goes back into the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. You're waiting for most of the moisture to evaporate here. And then we're gonna add some shrimp. If you don't jive on seafood, I would definitely bump up the sausage here. Maybe double up the amount of sausage, add some chicken. You could do rotisserie chicken, but we, love shrimp and sausage and Cajun food in my house. Uh, for those that are new around here, my mom grew up in Southern Louisiana. My grandparents are Cajun French. Okay, back in for 15 minutes. A few moments later. Now that all of our liquid has dispersed, we are going to add the best thing ever. I have one bag, not quite a pound, of raw shrimp, peeled, deveined, but tails 
on. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. You wanna make sure you season like each layer of this. Of course, some butter like this. And back into the oven for about six, seven minutes and we'll drizzle some lemon juice on top when we're done. Eventually. Okay, out of the oven, squeeze of lemon all over it. We'll stir it together, taste for salt and pepper and dinner is ready. Of course, you can always add a side salad, a bagged salad is super easy. And I'll tell you what, my family never complains when we have any Cajun style meal ever. It's one of our favorite things. I wish you could smell this through the camera. It smells absolutely amazing. Family review on the jambalaya. First of all, when it comes to authentic Cajun food, you are not going to replicate a real deep smoky flavor in a fast sheet pan dinner. It's just not going to happen. So if you're looking for that deep, deep smokiness that comes in a gumbo or an etouffee, you're not gonna get it. However, it is delicious, was devoured by everyone in my family. And then when they were looking for the leftovers, of which there were zero, <laughs> they were upset that there wasn't any more to have. So so I might have to do a double sheet pan next time I make that one. For this rosemary chicken and potatoes, we will start with our sauce or dressing. And I'm going to put in some fresh rosemary and thyme that I diced up about a tablespoon each. I'm telling you there is nothing better than fresh rosemary. It's one of my favorite things. A good amount of garlic. I'm gonna go about maybe a tablespoon of this squeezy tube because it's so easy. I have the zest of one lemon, the juice of two lemons, a good drizzle of olive oil here, salt and pepper. So I just have some fresh ground black pepper right here and a good amount of salt because I have a good amount of food and I wanna make sure everything is salted well. All right, let's assemble our sheet pan. Hey, I have four chicken breasts, these are pretty large. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to spread these out. I don't know, something like that, maybe on the edges. So I put my veggies in the middle, I don't really know. It probably doesn't matter. <laughs> I have one pound of fresh green beans, edges trimmed off, but other than that, nothing's been done to those. And a pound and a half of baby red potatoes. And my mixture that I made before is going over everything, the chicken, the potatoes, the green beans, and I like to add a few more sprigs of rosemary, like this. I wanna make sure everything is coated well. I'll do another drizzle of salt on my potatoes, green beans, and chicken, just to make sure everything has enough. If you ever find that your food tastes bland, it's because you need some more salt and pepper. And lastly, let's do a few lemon slices all over the top, like this. And we're gonna put this in a 400 and, is it 400? 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes until everything is cooked. It's kind of beautiful, isn't it? My chicken and potatoes need just a few more minutes. I tried to poke into some of these bigger ones and they are almost there. They're just a little, a little bit more. So I covered up my green beans with a, just a little bit of piece of foil so they don't dry out or burn. And we'll stick this back in for another 10 minutes. Rosemary chicken with potatoes and green beans. In my opinion, you cannot go wrong with any of those items. Chicken, delicious. Potatoes, delicious. Fresh rosemary, lemon, all delicious. Highly recommend. Let's make a pork dinner. This is so easy, I love it. So on half of my sheet pan here, I have about two pounds of a pork loin roast. This is a much more tender cut than like a pork butt roast. You don't want one of those. And over here on this other side, I will dump about a pound and a half, two pounds of rinsed little baby yellow potatoes. I had my kids rinse those for me. Little olive oil drizzle here, definitely on the pork and again over here on the potatoes. So the pork's gonna get this Tuscan seasoning. You don't have to use this McCormick one. I just figured it was easy, but I'm looking for some kind of Italian spice blend. So this does have salt in it, so I don't have to add anything else, but it also has garlic, basil, oregano, red pepper, onion, a little bit of sugar. This is just going to be sprinkled all over this. I'll massage it in in just a second. I've got my Dollar Tree pink Himalayan 
Himalayan salt here. A good amount of salt because potatoes can handle it. And then whatever pepper you like, I'm using this uh, Alpine Touch pepper blend. A little massage here. My oven has preheated to 400, it is ready to go. We'll put this in to get it going for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, and then we're gonna add some broccoli to the pan. That looks amazing, okay. 400 degrees for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, pull out your sheet pan and we'll add the broccoli. I got a pre-washed, ready to go, five or six cups of broccoli, and clearly we have a space issue. So I don't wanna burn my hands or anything, so I'm going to scooch that guy over and try and put the broccoli kind of in the middle. Again, drizzle of olive oil here and some salt and pepper. I have this uh, grinder. Fresh pepper. A grazie. Back into the oven for another 10 minutes. This sheet pan meal is sheet pan chili lime salmon with potatoes and peppers. So I already got started with the potatoes. I have some Yukon gold and because I have a larger family, I knew it wasn't all gonna fit on one pan. So I went double panned. This time my oven is on convection at 425. So chopped up the potatoes. Those roasted in the oven for about 15 minutes with salt and pepper and oil, that's it. After that, I added some bell peppers that I sliced in a nice spice rub. Let me tell you about that. It's chili powder, cumin, garlic powder, lime zest, and salt. I put half on the bell peppers, put those back in the oven, and the other half is here, which we will put on the salmon. And there is salt in this, so you don't really need to add extra salt here. And of course, once this is done cooking, we're gonna top it with lime juice because fresh lime on your food and in your drinks will change your life. Now salmon is pretty oily for a fish, so I am not adding extra oil to the fish right here. I'm just making sure it's nicely coated in my spice mixture. So this salmon is going to go in the oven for six to eight minutes just until it's cooked and then we will serve everything together. I love sheet pan dinners because it's really easy to put together like a delicious protein with a side of vegetables. You can pick any veggies that you like. The chili lime salmon with potatoes and peppers, wow. Can I just say, wow, my son, my 10 year old, scarfing the peppers and potatoes. And he told me that the whole meal was excellent, but his favorite part of the meal was the roasted bell peppers. So huge win in my book, will make again, especially with that amazing Thrive Market salmon. This Pioneer Woman recipe was originally skewers that go on the grill, and that was way too difficult, took way too long for me. So I am converting it to a sheet pan dinner. In this mixing bowl, I am going to mix up my sauce, which is uh, about a half a cup of a thick teriyaki sauce, and I'm just gonna eyeball that. Oh my gosh, that is so thick. Woo! And I, I like extra sauce. I'm basically taking her original recipe as a guide and kind of making up my own here, which is one of my favorite things to do when you cook is you have liberty to do whatever you want. Next up is some ginger. I'm just using this squeezy guy, about a tablespoon or two, that's probably two tablespoons. The juice of one lime, some crushed red pepper flakes. This is just to your taste. That's about a half a teaspoon. And I don't feel like chopping garlic today, so I will use garlic powder, although the fresh stuff is better. That's about half a teaspoon to one teaspoon. And last ingredient is some brown sugar. Uh, one tablespoon of brown sugar there. And then whisk it real good. And this is our sauce or dressing or whatever it is that you wanna call it. And let's put everything together on the sheet pan. My oven is preheating to 400 degrees right now. On our sheet pan, we're gonna add most of our ingredients, which is about a pound and a half of chicken. This is boneless, skinless chicken breast, chunked up into like one inch cubes or so. I have two red bell peppers going on, a bunch of green onions, and 20 ounces of pineapple. Now you can use the frozen ones like this, or you can use canned pineapple, fresh pineapple. It really does not matter. So this is 10 ounces and 20 ounces. Hey, remember our sauce? Here it comes. And I realize it doesn't look pretty at this moment. We're gonna mix it up with our hands, the best tools in the kitchen. It'll be totally fine. Mix 
vigorously. Okay, not vigorously, just thoroughly. <laughs> Get that everywhere, and if you want to top it off with some salt and pepper, that is totally your call. Look how beautiful these colors are. And the only thing that would make this a little bit better is to serve it on top of a bed of rice. So I will, of course, be doing that in my Instant Pot. Spread all of that out into the corners. How amazing is this? Look at this. 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or until the chicken is cooked. And the pioneer woman, like many Hawaiian chicken skewers that I like MacGyvered into a sheep pan dinner, holy crapola, huge win across the whole family. I highly, highly recommend you go make that one and then double it because you're gonna want leftovers because it's that delicious. Everyone in my family took a bite and they were like, wow, this flavor is amazing. This sheep pan dinner has two steps and it is, not easy to pronounce because it is bruschetta chicken. I had a friend who traveled to Italy and came back and said it was actually bruschetta, but I feel stupid saying it that way because that's not the way I ever heard it growing up. So I have no idea how to say it. I'm just gonna call it bruschetta because I'm an American and that's how I'm gonna do it. So I have my beautiful Thrive Market chicken breasts here. What I noticed about them is that they're very small. <laughs> in comparison to the ones you get in the grocery store that are just enormous, which is probably a good thing. These are super simple, just salt and pepper. And I just have this like basic shaky, shaky salt. Some fresh pepper. It's gonna be beautiful. I love, love pepper. My mom loves pepper a little too much, uh, but I do love like cracked black pepper. It's so good. Okay. And then down here in the center, I have one pound of halved uh, baby red potatoes. So this is gonna be the base of our dinner, uh, the chicken and the potatoes right here. And we are gonna season these potatoes as well. Obviously, if you have a smaller family, you don't have to do this many chicken breasts. This was um, about two pounds, ended up being seven breasts here. So I'm trying to squish them a little bit and make some room. Okay, the potatoes will have a drizzle of olive oil here like this. I'm doing garlic powder instead of fresh garlic because number one, I'm lazy. And number two, this has been in my pantry for so long that I am really trying to get rid of it. I just don't use garlic powder very often. I should just stop buying it. I have some Italian seasoning. Again, something I never ever use. I need to stop buying this one too. Go kind of heavy on that one. Basically we want like oregano, basil, thyme, all of that stuff. I'm just gonna do a little bit more. I also got thyme out, but this has thyme in it. So I think that's gonna be fine. Also salt and pepper on the potatoes, just like that. Okay, this smells amazing by the way. You have to make this just so you can smell this. Holy moly. I have some shaky Parmesan uh, cheese, which is also going to go on the potatoes, just kind of like that. And this whole pan will go into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes, you basically want the chicken cooked and the potatoes cooked. So if it takes a little bit longer than that, that's totally fine. If it's shorter than that, that's fine too. Everybody's oven's a little bit different. And I have my sheet pan pretty loaded down right here. This is a lot. So mine may go a little, a little longer than 20. And while it's cooking, we'll put together our tomato and mozzarella topping. I am going to make my tomato topping for the chicken right now. So I have about two cups of cherry tomatoes that were so big, I quartered them instead of half of them, but look how beautiful those are. To which I will add not quite a quarter cup of basil, mostly because my basil went bad really, really fast, and the rest of it is all brown. I have one garlic clove right here. You can use two if you want, but I find raw garlic to be really strong. So we're just going with the one. Next up, let's add a nice drizzle of olive oil. We'll throw on about a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar and some salt and pepper. So here's my pepper, lots of pepper. <laughs> and I just have some table salt right there. Quick little stir and this is gonna top our chicken once it comes out of the oven. You can make this ahead of time and let it sit um, or right before if you want the tomatoes a little more firm. Time to slice my fresh mozzarella which will go on top of the chicken about 10 minutes before it is done cooking so it can get all melty and delicious. Huge win, the potatoes Oh my gosh, I have to make potatoes like that for the rest of my life, essentially. Life is better with potatoes. You can put that on a shirt and I will buy it. All of the herbs, the salt and pepper, the Parmesan cheese, mwah. And I loved having the fresh mozzarella and the fresh tomatoes drizzled on top of the chicken. We scarfed that dinner and then 
there was no leftovers. It was all gone. <laughs> the last sheet pan meal for this video is going to be huevos rancheros. And I found this recipe in Food Network Magazine or something like that. Step one is I'm making my own tortilla chips. You could totally skip this step if you just wanna use regular tortilla chips, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I have 12 corn tortillas right here. Do you think I can cut through that? Cut into six triangle sized. Okay, so this way. Oh yes, knees and knife to the rescue. On my sheet pan, let's spread all these out the best that we can. I don't think it's gonna be perfect in any way. And also I love fresh like corn, corn tortillas. Usually the ones you get at the grocery store are not this nice, but I had an amazing viewer send these from HEB. Made fresh in store. These feel so soft and amazing. I live very far away from an HEB. I might have to plan a field trip to go to one. <laughs> okay, there we go. A nice generous drizzle here. A little sprinkle of salt, cause what's a chip without some salt? Some chili powder. I am truly just eyeballing this. The recipe does give measurements, but I'm just giving a little like that. Bake for 20 to 30 minutes, stirring every once in a while. While my chips are cooking in the oven, we will make our sauce with a blender. Actually this like blender bottle. I have a quarter cup of water in here to which I will add this chili powder. I tried to find everywhere a dried ancho chili, um, like an actual one to put in here. Four stores later, couldn't find one. So the Google says I could use this instead. So we will just use this chili powder. And I don't know what an entire dried chili would be, so I don't know, we're just gonna do that because I don't know. To this go in some scallion like this. I have a poblano pepper because um, couldn't get a jalapeno, weird, right? And a nice big bunch of cilantro goes in. Hold up, not done. A 15 ounce can of tomato sauce as well. There we go. And a little bit of salt. I'm doing about half a teaspoon there. Can always add more later. My blade is going on. We're gonna put this on the blender base and twirl this up for our sauce. Ah! Okay, I think that looks pretty good. That looks like sauce to me. Ooh, shit thick. There's our sauce. Hopefully it's salty enough. It smells good. Woo, smells like peppers. Woo! Last prep ingredient while we are waiting for our chips to cook is I have this can of chili beans, which I never buy, by the way. I don't know why, I just don't. And every time I use them, they are amazing. I should really buy these more often. So the whole can will go into a bowl with all of their juices. And we're gonna mash these up with uh, like a fork or a pastry blender. I might, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's it right there. The pastry blender is the winner, I think. Just until they're like semi-mashed, you know? Is the fork better? That's gonna take some time. Totally the pastry blender. Get your, get your arm work out while making this, this uh, meal. And oh, voila. Voila. Do you pronounce the V or no? I don't know what's right. I don't know what to do. Now we wait for the chips. So while you're waiting, I guess go get out your eggs. You will need 12 large eggs to complete this dish. Choose the egg of your choice, the one that makes you happy. And minions assemble. Okay, I had a situation with the chips. Someone came to the door and I got distracted and burned the original batch. This is my second batch, so word of the wise, don't burn your chips. And I didn't feel like I had enough tortillas, so I think I'm just gonna add a layer of just already done tortilla chips just to bump it up a little bit. I will drizzle about a half a cup of this sauce we made, a little bit, we'll use more at the end. Um, all of our beans that we mashed up, those go up next, like this. And 12 eggs are just gonna, <laughs> this part feels weird, but. They're just gonna kinda go <laughs> all over. And I don't like a runny yolk, so I'm just gonna crack these yolks real quick. We're gonna add a little drizzle of salt and pepper on these eggs so they taste good. The whole thing goes back in the oven for 20 minutes. Okay, just pulled these out of the oven and it's time to add our topping. So I have a whole bowl of the rest of our sauce just to serve on the table. I have a container of guacamole because I couldn't find any good avocados around here and a bowl of sliced limes. So on top of this, I will actually add some queso fresco here. I'm not really sure how much to do. 
a lot. I mean, like, what is life without a lot of cheese? You know what I'm saying? Right, Dave? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at it. You could do salsa too, I guess. I'm pretty sure I need more cheese. More cheese! Huevos Rancheros Delicioso. I'm a huge, huge fan. The only thing I would do different next time is to add some more salt, I think, to either the egg or the sauce, I'm not sure. A little bit more salt, but flavors are on point. Super, super satisfying, really good. And if you wanna save yourself a good amount of time, just use pre-made tortilla chips so you don't have to make your own, but you can make your own if you want to. I have had so much fun cooking with you today. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me. Remember, all those recipes will be down in the description box for you if you wanna go check them out and make any of these for your family. I know they would enjoy it as much as my family enjoyed it. If you haven't liked this video and subscribed to the channel yet, there's still time, there's still time, my friends. I would love to have you hang out with me a little bit more. If you want more cooking inspo, I will leave an entire playlist of cooking and dinner recipes for you also in the bloop below. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and until next time, happy eating.